Good morning or afternoon. My name is Don Lindsay and I'm a business analyst working with 32Soft in Toronto. I'm pleased to participate in the Midwest, West Coast and Southeast User Group's virtual spring conference for 2021. Today, I'd like to take a look at one aspect of ERP that we normally do not think about that much, and that is the relationship of dates and times in ERP. It may seem obvious, but time is so integral to our usage of ERP and our daily lives that we often do not think about it. Let's take a look at some of our concepts of time and how it has been used throughout history. So what is time? Time is described as the infinite continued progression of existence and events that occur in an apparent irreversible succession from the past through the present into the future. Aristotle contended that time is the most unknown of all unknown things. We can look at <coughs> time in two modalities. We refer to these as the nomothetic and the idiomatic. Nomothetic refers to the study of general laws of science, that is, science as a whole. Idiomatic refers to the particular, a specific point in time, as measured in hours or minutes. We will concentrate on the idiomatic and that which drives ERP. A unit of time or sometimes called a midst, is a particular interval of time that is used in a standard way of measuring or expressing duration. The base unit of time, an international system of units, is a second, or as indicated, nine billion oscillations of the cesium atom. We don't use second much in QAD, as the common time units in QAD are minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, quarters, and years. Humanity has used several different methods and contraptions for telling time throughout history. Sundials are probably one of the first methods of measuring time. A sundial is simply a device that indicates time by using a shadow cast by the position of the sun on a reference scale. A celestra, or water clock, is one of the older time measuring instruments. It was invented around the 16th century BC. The water clock is any time piece by which time is measured by the regulated flow of a liquid into or out of a vessel. The hourglass first appeared in Europe around the 18th century. By the early 14th century, sand in glass was a commonly used in Italy and throughout Europe to measure time. A variation of the hourglass is the clock candle, where a thin candle with consistently spaced markings is burned, indicating the passage of time. In the 11th century, Arabic engineers invented water clocks driven by gears and weights, what we generally call a clock today. The first accurate atomic clock based on the aforementioned transitions of the cesium-133 atom, was built by Louis Essen in 1955 at the National Physics Laboratory in the United Kingdom. In 1764, John Harrison invented the chronometer. The chronometer measures time accurately in spite of of motion or varying conditions. It became a popular instrument among merchant marines during the 19th century. Scottish-born Sir Stanford Fleming was the first to propose a worldwide system of time zones in 1879. Time zones are critical to the supply chain. If you have ever tried to coordinate a go-to meeting across several time zones in Europe and the U.S., and Asia, at the same time, it can be quite a challenge. With the advent of the worldwide supply chain applications that we talked about last month, this is becoming more and more critical consideration in scheduling. 
As we have seen, there is a long history of mankind using various constructions to consider time and date. A calendar is simply a system of organizing days for social, religious, commercial, or business purposes. This is done by giving names to the time periods, typically days, weeks, months, years, etc. A date is a designation of a specific day within such a system. There are basically three types of calendars. There are solar calendars, those based on the moon or lunar calendars, and a combination of the two called lunar solar calendars, all for keeping track of time. The Georgian calendar is the solar dating system used by most of the world today. It is named for Pope Gregory VIII who issued a papal bull in 1582 announcing calendar reforms for all of Catholic Christendom. Let's take a look at some of the major elements of time used in ERP. The year is the orbital period of a planetary body. For example, the Earth is moving in its orbit around the Sun. The year is a period of 365 days. 366 in leap years, starting from the 1st of January used for reckoning time for ordinary affairs. A month is each of the 12 named periods in which a year is divided. It is a period of time between the same dates on successive calendars, or 28 days or 4 weeks. The month's and how they are named is always an interesting lesson in history. I will leave this overhead for you to peruse at your leisure. Many functions in QAD are driven into weekly time buckets. A week is a time unit equal to seven days. It is the standard period of time used for cycles for rest and work. Working days for manufacturing and QRD are typically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And for purchasing, we find uh, that purchasing uses all seven days for operation. Again, the names of the weeks are derived from history and mythology. Here we see an Italian cameo bracelet from the mid-19th century representing the days of the week. A day is probably the most commonly used element for scheduling functions in QED. Here, Dagar, the Norse god of the day, rides across the heavens in a 19th century painting. Minutes are used in QED in several scheduling functions. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 3 1,600 seconds in a 24-hour day, seven days a week, etc., etc. There are specific symbols used to denote uh, minutes and time selections. A holiday is a day set aside by custom or law on which normal activities, especially business and school hours, are suspended. The degree to which normal activities are reduced by holidays may depend upon local customs, the type of judge, or even personal preference. Here we have a list of the national holidays. Unique holidays for your company should be input into 36.2.1 holiday maintenance. Holidays are set for days that no one works. Here we see the 36.2.1 menu and QED. Holidays can be different at each site. Holidays can vary by religion, custom, or business tradition. Manufacturing orders should never be due or operations never scheduled on a holiday. However, you can always override that if desired. If you use service and support to track your products in several sites or countries in the field, you can use the 1115.9 area holiday maintenance to specify local holidays by area. Let's consider the concept of duration, another time concept represented in QAD. Duration 
refers to the amount of elapsed time between two events, the time during which something occurs. It is a theory of time and consciousness first proposed by the Frenchman Henri Bergson. Henri Louis Bergson, from 1859 to 1941, was a French philosopher. He said the determination is an impossibility, that free will is the pure mobility, which Bergson identified as being the duration. It is the existence of time in how we measure time. Duration, as an example of duration in QAD, the field IN underscore duration underscore buffered in the line master represents the buffer duration in time stored in seconds associated with the production line, which acts as a buffer for concepts such as weight, move, and cue time. An interval, another time concept in QED, is a set of numbers that contain all real numbers lying between two numbers of a set. In QED, an interval is a code indicating the interval quantity that covers either discrete weeks or months. We see this in cycle counting with the average interval or the cycle count interval. Aging is simply the process of becoming older. I'm old, you're old, we're all getting older. QAD uses aging, particularly in customer and supplier data, as in aging the customer and supplier consignment functionality. For example, QAD uses 7.18.11 aging inventory batch update to recalculate the customer and supplier consignment inventory that is in inventory and has been in the possession of a consignee for X number of periods. The 28.17.11 supplier aging analysis group current, we see the report gives us a status of consigned inventory and is displayed for a particular supplier or item. Horizons are the line at which the earth appears to meet the sky. In astronomy, it is the great circle, the plane which passes through the center of the earth and is parallel to that represents the horizon of the place. In geology, it's a layer of soil or rock or strata. In QED, a horizon normally refers to the extent of a period out into the future. For example, the origin of uh, an origin horizon in QED may be seen in 2324, MRP control. This defines the number of calendar days to include in the MRP planning process. MRP only processes material requirements within this planning horizon and ignores activities outside of it. You can also see there are a couple of other horizons defined in 2324, the order release horizon and the max dynamic time fence horizon. A period is defined as an amount of time, such as a time period of 30 years, or Picasso's blue period. Periods are also used in QAD. There are, to my count, 38 menu items which allow the manipulation and a definition of periods in QAD. Calendars in QAD can be defined across multiple levels, for example, domains, sites, production lines, and work centers. We define hours for workdays and shifts, and these are used for scheduling data for calculating capacity, MRP, and schedules. When there are different shifts or work hour or day calendars, calendars can be defined for domains, sites, or production lines and work centers as required. Calendar workdays, sometimes hours, are used to schedule dates for manufacturing, purchasing, sales, and supply chain operation. Release and due dates are normally calculated on work days. A calendar must be defined for a production line for planning and scheduling workbenches to calculate capacity, 
for production on that production line. A calendar must be defined <clears throat> for that production line. And we have sites and work center calendars where we define a site and all work centers within that site would then use that uh, particular calendar. In 33.1.4, uh, Sales and Operations Planning, there is a, a calendar cross-reference build function that links the calendar year to corresponding physical periods in the general ledger calendar. Operations Planning uses these links to display operations planning data by period as well as by week. The 7.3.1 Customer Calendar Maintenance defines a customer's standard work week and non-working days, such as holidays. It is used as a default customer calendar that applies to the customer ship to address. Calendars are also used in scheduling for customer plan schedules, customer ship to, and required ship schedules. In 5.5.1.1, Supplier Calendar Maintenance, this defines a supplier's standard work week and defines exceptions to that normal calendar, such as scheduled work, page, uh, work periods. This may have to be updated frequently as uh, suppliers have their operations, which they uh, need to schedule also. 11.13.5.10, Engineering Calendar in Service and Support. Engineering calendar is used for engineering scheduling functions. You define the engineer code, the engineer area, skills associated with the engineer, and then you can use that uh, calendar for visibility into engineering schedule for parts availability and travel distances. In service and support, the engineer calendar is used for this scheduling function. In three... 32.1.5, fixed calendar, uh, fixed asset calendar maintenance. Uh, this is used to set up calendars for non-posting books in the fixed asset module. <clears throat> Dates in control files in QAD determine functionality and defaults in operation parameters for all modules in QAD. There are 109 control files in QAD. Not all have date parameters. Here we see the 5.24 purchasing, and we can see that the uh, checkbox of keep booking history sets the parameters and tells the system to maintain uh, booking history. If we check that booking history, we can get a uh, report that tells us in 5.9.20. PO change history, what has occurred against a purchase order. The 16.24 work order control file, we take note of the field limit allocation to available. There are many settings in control files that are related to or, or influenced by the functionality determined in other fields. This is why we refer to the fact there is much study and application required to understand the full date functionality in QAD. 18.22.24, repetitive control. We see the parameters for advanced repetitive and cumulative orders. Here we see the end effect default method, which indicates how you're going to treat uh, the end of work orders. Are you going to set them for cumulative orders equal to the GL start and end dates? Or are you going to start activities by calendar date? Or are you going to set your own based on uh, a number of days period? The 7.1.24 sales order control. Here we see fields and parameters for controlling the sales orders. We can change allocate sales order lines and days. ATP enforcement enable it. Shipping lead time. ATP horizon. We can even have QED calculate promise dates if we want. The 36.9.6, one of the EE variations of the old SE control files, we see the values for the ability to vary pricing by sales order line item. 
This allows for each item in a sales order to have its own pricing policy. In 3.24 inventory control, we see the date parameters for issue days and picking days. Issue days specify the number of calendar days before expiration of an item with a limited shelf life can be picked or issued. Picking order sets or creates pick lists based on either date or expiration date of inventory lots in locations. The 36.9.10 services support accounting control, again, uh, in the financial control for services support, we can see parameters for period-based billing, period partial, prorating, last due date build, last cycle build, default billing cycle, and start from warranty date. The Again, in the 36.9.10, we see the keep contract history flag. Again, we always want to indicate this as yet. There are lots of places in QED that ask us if we want to keep history. And again, we recommend yes, unless there's some network issue uh, regarding space. You should review all 900, 109 control files that relate to the functionality that you have in your instance of QED to ensure that the date and time functionalities are set properly according to your environment. Daybooks. A daybook is a book of original entry in which an accountant records transactions as of the date they occur. This information is later transferred to a ledger from which the information is summarized into a set of financial statements. The use of daybooks is mandatory for all modules. Daybooks provide many advantages in terms of analysis, segregation of transactions, numbering speed of period close, etc. Let's take a look at some of the individual dates associated with transactions in QED. If you look at most popular KPIs for operations, they all revolve around, or most revolve around, the date functionality in your ERP system. Creation dates is the date that the data was added to or created in a table. The default date is the name of the system date. You can select items uh, by date atom. I added uh, in the item master file in print uh, various reports for price list labels, etc. You can also apply field security to uh, create date activity. Transaction add dates, these dates uh, are from the TR HIST. They record the addition of order and data in QAD. Order date are the dates of an entry of a sales order or a work order or a purchase order was recorded, similar to an add date. Again, the default is a system date. And take heed to get this correct. Accountants and auditors are normally very interested in these dates especially if you're using a revenue recognition. Again, you can supply field security. In 7.1.1, sales order maintenance, uh, we find the records for date of entry. Sales order line carries the same date functionality. Due dates in QED for sales orders, customer schedules, work orders, cumulative orders, flow schedules, Production orders, requisitions, POs, supplier schedules are critical to ERP as they represent the specifics of operations in supply chain functionality. These and all dates should be totally accurate and represent the reality of the supply chain operations exactly if ERP is to be able to operate correctly. Past due refers to an action that has not been made by its cutoff time or at the end of its due date. For example, a buyer who is past due will face some penalties or free fees. Most people, customers and executives specifically, do not like past due. It upsets a lot of people. MRP does not work well with past dues. Don't let past dues exist in your ERP system. 
Required dates in QED are the dates that are stipulated as necessary to be done by, made by, or provided by. This is when the customer wants to receive his item. Pretty important. Typical required dates in QED, required schedule, month and weeks, and required dates on sales orders and purchase orders. Promise dates for items is the date an item is promised to arrive at the customer location. Commitment is important to the supply chain. Some examples, spares, expected ship to date, repairs, original expected date, OEM dates, site promise dates. These are all critical to establishing uh, a commitment in the supply chain to date functionality. Performance dates is optionally entered and done when a part is available to ship. Lots of factors can affect available to ship. This is probably going to require a constant update to maintain validity in the system. We have covered pricing in previous webinars, but there are basically three different areas of pricing functionality in QED. Sales, purchasing, and service. The pricing date is the effective date to be used by the system to find a price list that applies to an order. If you leave a field blank, the system can use one of five dates specified on the sales order header, order, required, promise, due, or performance date to set the default pricing. In 10.1.2, we see the sales order default pricing uh, can be set for a particular order. The effective date, expected date, uh, for example, in return to supplier functionality and services support is a date that you expect to send an item to a supplier. The need date in requisition functionality, the need date of a requisition is when the user or creator of the rec needs the part delivered. Fairly important. Release date is the date a work order is scheduled to be released to production. Whenever you enter an initial automatically changes the actual release date when you release or print the work order. Dates for shelf life and expiration. Shelf life is the number of calendar days that an item can be held in inventory before it becomes unusable. In 1.22.1, lot master maintenance, this allows for a whole series of user definable fields. The expiration date, this is the date on which a lot will expire. It's equal to the shelf date plus the date received. There's a great blog article in the actual insights by Alban Bintin of QED. Inventory expired and expiring, and I've given you the uh, URL for that great article. Expiration uh, date control. Here's a whole series of activities for controlling expired material, tools, planning, issues, circumstances, and processes. I'll leave this for your future perusal. 3.5.1, obsolete inventory analysis. Uh, QED gives you a tool to analyze excess and obsolete. Obsolete inventory analysis can be used to calculate current inventory usage for a specific item or type of item over a predefined period. This is very important to the accounting and finance side of QED. The 3.21.2, uh, we use the transaction browse as your primary tool for analyzing and understanding the perpetual record. The effective date in the perpetual record is the date the transaction executes to the general ledger. To make accountants happy, you have to have accurate transactions, work extension, uh, instructions, etc. In terms of date, time, ship date, expired date, etc. The 25.15.2.1 GL transaction view uh, 25, uh, this gives the same visibility that you see in TRHIS, only in terms of financial data, uh, calendar year, calendar period, daybook codes, posting, date, system dates. Daybooks, again, are primarily a mechanism 
for the interface between operations and finance. Receipt dates in TRHIS are recorded as RCT-XXX. You can do receipt dates for consignment, for transfers, final assembly schedules, purchase orders, sales order returns, unplanned issues. Accountants don't like to see those. Uh, work orders. Receipt transactions increase the perpetual record and normally increase in addition to uh, accounts payable. In 1.4.1, one, there are three primary dates associated with the item master file, the date added, and in terms of cycle counting, which is always a challenge, you want to make sure that you uh, get with your uh, finance department to set up your cycle count processing uh, work instructions. You have the average interval and the cycle count interval. In 1.4.3, you see the date added in 1.4.5. We have uh, values for shelf life. And in 1.4.7 or 1.4.17, uh, we find data for lead time, inspection, manufacturing lead time, cumulative purchasing lead time, along with uh, run time and setup. In 11.3.7, the service item maintenance, uh, items are out in the field and they need to be tracked. Uh, to mean, average, failure, and repair times in terms of mode, mean, medium. Uh, so QID provides uh, fields for days between PM, uh, mean time between failures and repair, mean time between failures and repair for manufacturing, standard repair times, etc. Lead time is critical to the operation of your ERP functionality. Dates reflect the existential change of circumstances and need to estimate the variation of respective elements over time to allow the ability to manipulate ERP to execute its enterprise activities. Lead time elements are uh, lead time fences, lead times available to promise, run time, setup time, etc. Operation versus interoperation lead time. Here we see the five elements of manufacturing lead time. Operation lead times being set up and run. Interoperation lead times consisting of queue, wait, and move. Accurate representation of these lead time elements will play heavily in your ability to use capacity and execution functions in your ERP system. The statement of the parent component relationship is the basic. Uh, relationship that leads to the use of time phase planning in material requirements planning. The two primary date issues come from the start of the relationship and the end of the relationship. You also have a lead time offset so you can individually modify a single parent component requirement. In 14.5, or 14.15, work order maintenance. Here is where we schedule individual time periods and horizons. You can see time period, period numbers, uh, calculate days, and horizons. Work centers, in many cases, are temporary and should be updated at least quarterly to ensure timely and consistent date management. The 14.18.1, work center calendar maintenance allows you to define a specific work center or machine calendar for shift, hours, start time, productivity, and pattern. And the 14.18.4 allows you to define exceptions for those particular processes, even by shift. Routing data determines the sequence of events of a manufacturing work order in work and process. This is critical for the correct scheduling and execution of our QID ERP system. The definition of routings allow for the statement of operation start and end dates, queue times, wait times, setup, run time, and move time. Allocations are defined as uncashed stockroom receipts. They are general and detailed. Dates can play a very important part in the execution of material in future and current statuses. 
Please review this matrix as allocations can be somewhat daunting to execute properly. In 36.1.4.3.1, business relationship, there are several elements of QED that require business relationships. And we'll discuss those uh, a little bit later. Here we see the 28.20.1.1, supplier create. Besides, customer suppliers are one of the most important elements of your supply chain information. The 2.3.1, this is the old version of supplier maintenance and SE. It's still required for operational setup so that uh, operations can interface correctly with the EE side of QED. In 1.19, supplier item maintenance, uh, as the COVID disruption becomes more and more uh, pronounced in 2021, uh, the use of 1.1 becomes more and more critical aspect of your relationship with your suppliers. The 5.7 purchase order is probably one of the more important orders in your supply chain, specifically relates to the availability of product in the supply chain. Primary dates uh, of tracking exist at the header and the order date for order date, due date, and day book references. Uh, the purchase order line, here we define the exact part number at the idiomatic level, uh, at the line item level as to what we wish the supplier to uh, provide us. We have three primary dates associated with the line level, the due date, the performance date, and the need date. In 5.5.1.24, the su uh, supplier schedule control file, this allows you to generate uh, date-based release IDs and to define how many zero schedules you're going to allow for a particular supplier. In 5.5.1.13, supplier schedule order maintenance, here we can set the start date, the end date, the order reven, uh, review date, and again, the date book set. Uh, subcontracting with uh, the disruption of the supply chain and COVID, uh, subcontracting is becoming more and more critical to the successful operation of our ERP systems and the need for accurate data. In subcontracting, this starts with the creation of the work order to issue material for the further processing at the vendor. Here we have uh, order date, release date, due date, and supplier. The 14.13.1 uh, routing maintenance. This uh, helps us keep track of the material this is issued to locations and the date of return to the facility for subcontract. Uh, the purchase order is the last element of tracking and the control of subcontract process. Uh, if you have an S in the line type, you'll see a little pop-up, which allows you to relate then the work order ID and the operation uh, for the vendor to be recompensed for his value add. Again, with 36.1.4.3.1, uh, again, customer is basic to the ERP system. Uh, you can look at a uh, little URL there for uh, an article we published on business relationships in the 32 Swift website. The 27.20.1.1, customer create. Uh, here, the customers can be referenced on sales quotations, sales orders and schedules, invoice, accounts receivable, uh, return to material authorizations, etc. Again, like the 23 or 2.3.1, the 2.1.1 customer data needs to be maintained for the operational side in interface to the EE uh, operations. And again, the 1.16. Similar to the 1.19, <clears throat> you can create a relationship between your part number and the customer's part number. Since we recognize that demand in its several modes drives requirements in ERP and sub subsequently determines build and procurement cycles, demand dates are critical to your control of ERP. We identify uh, demand in terms of sales orders, customer schedules, forecasts, and allocations. The sales order header 
Uh, we see the order dates, required, promise, due, pricing, and daybook sets. Uh, in 7.1.1, .1, we see the uh, allocate days. You can enter the number of calendar days the system should use to determine the cutoff for allocating items to a sales order. Again, uh, I refer you to the general versus detailed allocation matrix from previous. Uh, the warranty start date where there's organizations that utilize service and support and uh, as many and many more are doing. The designation of product warranty can be input during the sales order process. The 7.3.13 customer schedule order maintenance. Customer uh, schedules are primarily used in the auto industry to indicate uh, what you as a supplier, a date, and a representative of customers required by date. This uh, includes week offset, includes Saturday and Sunday transportation days, uh, price and EDI invoice history, and daybook functionality. In the 7.13.1, pending invoice maintenance, uh, you have the ability to review and modify order date, required date, due date, perform date, and pricing date. In 22.1, forecast maintenance, you can use forecast maintenance to drive demand into the MRP process. However, the actual value of each can be calculated by several different methods. You can use the 22.7 uh, simulated forecast maintenance to create your own forecast processes. The seasonal build maintenance allows you to specify end dates uh, for seasonality and determine how much inventory you want accumulated by various end dates. Dates in work orders. The work order controls the date associated with operations, material requirements, planning, and financial applications. 16.1 header denotes order date, release date, and due date. The 16.13.13 .13 work order routing maintenance allows you to set start and end dates, standard setup and run, move times, queue times, and wait times, along with subcontract lead times. And then the 16.21, here we enter the general ledger effective date associated with the closing of a work order. This transaction takes all the variances out of the work order system and drives them into the general ledger, general ledger based on your 1.2.1 uh, .1 production line setups. This is critical to the proper period costing uh, and reporting in finance. In 18.22.6, cumulative order maintenance. Uh, discrete orders are part number, quantity, and date. Advanced repetitive are orders to be produced during a period with a variable quantity. And here we have start and end effectivity. There are three primary types of transactions that affect the perpetual record and subsequently drive dates in ERP. Those are the issue transactions, the receipt transactions, and transaction transfers. Anything that creates or moves inventory. All these dates are sensitive and must be accurate. The perpetual record or the continuously updated quantity on hand and the audit trail uh, denote the transaction, the expiration date, and the effective date. Enough cannot be said about the requirement for accuracy, consistency, and timeliness regarding transactional data. In 3.1.1, inventory transaction. Here we can update the detail maintenance for shelf life and expiration. In the 3.4.1, along with 3.4.2, 3, and 4, we transfer product, which creates a dual-sided transaction of ISS-TR and RCT-TR, along with its effective date. The 3.16.15, uh, inventory evaluation as of date. And there's a handy little report. Accountants always want to see this report at the end of each month. The 3.13.1 cycle count worksheet print dates in the cycle count include last count, number of items, past due quantity only, along with the effective date and uh, the cycle date. Somewhat 
convoluted setup and requires intense involvement with accounting and warehousing to properly uh, work a count, cycle count program. If you don't do cycle counting, then you're going to be forced to use the 3.16 physical inventory menu to maintain accuracy of your perpetual record. If you uh, use that, then the 3.16.21 inventory balance update denotes the effective date of that count process. MRP was the original enterprise program uh, driven by dates. Orlikin and Plossel invented MRP back in the late 1960s, and it is the time-phased explosion of the bill of material. Uh, here is the basic MRP record, which we've covered several times. Uh, the dates associated with the basic record include gross requirements date, schedule receipt date, projected available, net requirement, planned order receipts, due dates, planned order release, order promise need, uh, and operational start and due dates. You need to understand how and why MRP works with dates. Uh, each closed loop planning and priority level has a corresponding capacity level. Each is date sensitive. Resource requirements planning, rough cut capacity planning, CRP, and shop floor control. Remember, a plan that exceeds capacity will not get built and will build inventory. The 24.1 recalculate capacity plan allows you to recalculate the capacity plan from MRP work orders and routings and resources by date based on due date and release date. The 24.14 work order load summary report. Uh, this is one of the primary tools for the analysis of capacity issues uh, with start end dates, periods, queue times, and wait times. It allows you to visually represent capacity load over, under, and cumulative. The 24.14, there is an EMT process. EMT is a series of sales orders, purchase order receipts, and shipments across multiple domains, sites, and entities. Uh, there's DRP, which is used to manage the material uh, movement of manufacturing site to distribution sites. There is sales and operations planning. Uh, which is basically an integrated business management process through which the executive leadership team continually achieves focus alignment and synchronization along all functional uh, aspects of the organization. All are date and period uh, oriented. We don't have time to uh, day to cover all of the date requirements and impacts for service and support module, but these include call dates, call activity recording dates, invoice dates, install dates, engineering scheduling dates, warranty contract, RMA, and return to supplier dates. To conclude, as we've said, the amount of information required to properly run and operate a modern ERP or supply chain application are voluminous, to say the least. 32 soft loaders Simplify the process of getting information in and out of QED in a familiar Excel format, which makes editing and modifying the critical data for your QED ERP system easy to process. Data loaders help manage this large volume of required updates. Their two soft offers complementary software trials. Installation is very simple and they come with a 60-day complimentary trial period so you can show results to your management team without any cost outlays. There are over 49,000 field-to-table relationships in the QED functionality code. It is helpful to be able to relate a specific type of field to others with the same name and function. Have the IT organization create a quick progress query or a browse to outbound a text file so that these relationships can be viewed in a row column format. Dates play a critical role in the processing ERP data. From the establishment of calendars to transaction dates to order and operational periods, the correct statement of time and control 
over the dates in ERP will significantly contribute to improved use of ERP data. Just remember, we've only scratched the surface. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, little review of some of the functionality that might assist in your use of control of dates and time in QED. We wish to wish you the best for a wonderful 2021 and the remainder of the Mug Sug <coughs> virtual conference. Please contact myself or Denise if you can think of any other questions after the webinar is closed, and we will get back to you as soon 